Hi Flusstube, um, here is another short little video, I hope it will be short anyway. Um, this is about, I said I was going to come back and talk to you about the Mirabilias and the few little issues with the Mirabilia patterns I've had over the years doing the Multitude of Mermaids I've done. Um, Nora Corbett does some of the most beautiful ladies and the most beautiful mermaids and fairies I've come across so far. Um, her patterns are quite easy, there's just two little issues that I always find people asking, what do I do here? One is um, her, so this is, an, this is my very first whoop, Mirabilia pattern that I did up, this is just the picture of the pattern. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, now, with the patterns the issues arise around the beads, the places where she's left a spot for the beads and also the arms and whether you leave a space, do a part stitch and so forth. So I'm just going to just talk about what I've done over the years and what I've found works for me. So we we'll just... So the patterns come, they're beautifully presented patterns. Um, key down the bottom, lovely little crossover, these three, three, two lines are crossed over, <coughs> so gorgeous, and then on the back side, they are a bit hard to scan in because I use my iPad to stitch, I love using my iPad because I can zoom in, I can colour, I can double colour, it's just handy, I don't have to have pieces of paper and clipboards and highlighters, um, over the years I've had accidents with highlighters um, on my fabric. It does wash out people if you do get highlighter just wash it straight away and it comes out. Um, so yeah, so let's have a look. This is probably a bit, I'm using this pattern because this is the best pattern to explain what she does with the bigger beads and it's also probably one of the smaller frames so it's easier to manipulate in front of the camera. So the first thing we are looking at now is, as I come up, I need to go this way. Uh, see the big empty spots where she's left spaces for big beads. So these spots, more often than not, are larger than the beads she wishes to place in there. So I'll just grab the actual pattern. So what I do is when I get to these spots, I had originally, with this one, I had originally left the big gap, realised that there was big holes all over my pattern and I didn't like that. I actually went back and filled in those holes except for the point. Um, um, the, so, okay, so those spots I showed you were for these flowers. Uh, where's the camera? I have the wonkiest time trying to find my camera. Uh, okay, we need to bring, I'm just going to bring a light in, it'll make me look funny, but hopefully make it easier to see these beautiful flower shaped beads. Now, I come up, you can sort of see there's a bit of a curvature upwards and downwards on them. What I do did, and I'll show you on one of these ones where they hang, I actually have gone and stitched in that whole area around oh, around where the bead is. So she left a great big this way, a big spot underneath this bead, um, and I've gone and stitched underneath it, so that the only point that's been left is where the tip or the point of the bead is sitting onto the fabric. So it's nestled into the cross stitch. Um, I find that works best for me. You don't have to do it. Some people just leave the big block. I don't like that. I like it to be as complete as possible. Um, seed beads, the spots she leaves for seed beads are fine. It's just when she starts using the treasures. Um, I find the spaces are left are too large. And if you leave it as blank as they do, it looks a bit ridiculous. I think she does it so that you know that there's a big bead going there. But, and then the next thing is the skin. Um, so 
this is actually this is probably one of the better designs for it though she was my for her being consistent I found she's a lot less consistent with the Persephone pattern but I can't find where I've put the actual pattern to show you when they do she goes on her angles up and down and to get the curvature on the arms here um, she can be a bit inconsistent about putting in a symbol for a quarter stitch or a half stitch and I tend to find that I go through and I look at the angle of what I'm going to be stitching on with my back stitch and try and make sure that I have the fullest, most um, full of the line, does that make sense? Um, so I don't like having fabric showing through between my stitching and my back stitching. Um, so sometimes my arms do tend to look okay a little wobbly or a little bit jagged actually it might be better I think you can really see it on this girl's arms where I'm climbing oh this is tricky see how it's all a little bit wobbly and if up close her arms look a bit funny but when you get back at a distance you can't tell so um, but she was these girls were my second mermaids I'd stitched and um, I've since worked out that I've got to do it the best and when I first started stitching I used to think when back stitching I had to do just one individual stitch and I didn't really like over two strands of the fabric I hope this makes sense instead now I've worked out that I can go over three strands of the fabric and only go one way and go only one the other and and I'm getting I'm getting a smoother line um, I went and priced an actual camera today where I can do video as well as take photos and um, I've got a little bit of saving but to do but once I've got that money put aside and I can get myself this lovely camera I saw um, I think I'll do an actual video footage showing you what I'm like an actual tutorial type thing on what I was doing. There may be some out there. Um, I hope there are. <laughs> I hope I'm not the only one who's thought, oh, did you realize that you don't have to do? Um, I was, I'm self-taught and I'm very strict with my stitching for myself. So I try very hard to make, so this is the front of my stitching and this is the back of my stitching. Um, go this way. Um, everything I had read and learnt about cross stitch was the back had to look very similar to the front. Um, while all you, you should have crosses on the front, you should have straight lines on the back, and it should be very neat. And you shouldn't. It should look very similar. A shadow of what you have on the front. You shouldn't be running your threads more than two stitches always strive to make it as neat as possible um, so and that's what I've learned through all the reading i had done back then on the old in the Semco books and the embroidery hand books that mum had bought and I'd borrowed out of libraries and with the invent with heaven and earth style and pixel stitching becoming the big thing um, I think people are less and less tidy on the back. Um, the need for it, they, oh, it's heaven and earth. I still try. I still try and keep my heaven and earth reasonably tidy, um, and I really struggle with the concept of parking, as I believe in getting every stitch in that particular colour. As I mentioned in a previous, uh, my previous videos. So anyway. That's my little piece on stitching mirabilias and beading mirabilias. I, um, oh, another thing about beading on mirabilias. I used, did try out the invisible, you can get invisible beading thread and it is clear and it is fine and it's like a super fine um, monofilament fishing line. 
I hate using it. It knots and it twists. I love the fact that it doesn't change your bead colours. You cannot see it and it just looks like your beads are sitting on the fabric. But having said that, um, it, uh, no, that's not one. It knots, it twists, it catches, it bubbles, it slides out. Uh, no, I think I may have done the piece. So what I use, I find what works best for me is I use the white Nymo. Nymo, Nemo. It's a beading thread, again, it is, I don't use DMC. Um, but I find the white Nymo, it's a bit reflective. And so it takes on the colour of, a bit of the colour of the bead and the colour of the fabric. And so you can't really see it. You're not getting a white bit of thread. Um, so all of this was beaded with the white knot with the white Nymo and you get it on a tilt and you cannot see it or pick it up at all even when I've done had to use little beads to anchor these gorgeous flowers okay where's my camera there we go you can just see it there but it's on the whole of the piece you can't tell um, and it's just a lot easier to use than trying to use the invisible beading filament um, you can see it on the back as you jump around I think that's when my mirabilia start getting messy is when I'm beading and then I do just jump around to the next spot where I need to put beads because it's a bit of because it's slipperier than your DMC, it's a bit of a bugger to um, anchor. But um, yeah, so that's my say on beading. And oh gosh, we're having another heat wave. I hope my aircon is not blasting too loudly and you can hear me clearly. Um, but anyway, that's my say on mirabilias and stitching mirabilias. Um, don't think I have anything else to say. Um, I hope you're all having a lovely weekend and goodbye for now.